Hello and welcome to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I'm your host, Haley Hayhurst, the owner of Espresso Podcast Production. Today, I have a really cool guest. Every single time I opened up Facebook, I felt like I saw her face and I was like, okay, I'm going to interview her. She does marketing well. If I keep seeing her and I want to have her on my podcast, imagine what her clients think. They obviously want to work with her. So I asked her and thankfully she said yes. So my guest today, her name is Sarah K. Ramsey, aka the Toxic Person Proof Girl. So Sarah is a life strategist, a relationship specialist, a creative solution finder, and a heart-centered problem solver. She's also the host of the Toxic Person Proof podcast. Sarah started this, okay, this blew my mind. Sarah started this podcast during COVID and she is past episode 300. You'll hear my jaw drop in this episode when I asked her how she did this. She said that she just loves talking to people and during COVID, like who were we going to talk to? So I'm so happy that she found her thing. She was able to start a podcast She outsources all of her editing, so all she does is content creation, and she absolutely loves having it. She used to put out five episodes a week, which for some of us with podcasts would blow our minds, right? But it was perfect for her, and that's the reason I keep seeing her everywhere. She has so much content. She's making all these connections. These are 300 interviews. Do you know how many connections she made? She was putting herself out there. She was talking to these people. She talks about this in the episode, but she's also a best-selling author. Her book is called Becoming Toxic Person Proof, Clear the Confusion, and Learn to Trust Yourself. And she also has a new book coming out that's all about problem solving and decision making. So her strategy is incredible because 300 people she interviewed, she's going to go to them and say, hey, can you give me a book review? And that's 300 book reviews and more. So I am just so excited for you to listen to this episode because this is exactly what it means to find your niche, find what you want to do and really put yourself out there. Sarah says a quote in this that says, you have to do something to set apart your brand And you'll also hear this in the episode, but she could be a narcissist coach. She could be a coach on relationships, but no, she is the toxic person proof girl. And that in itself is her unique selling proposition. Such a good business move. So definitely go connect with Sarah on Facebook and Instagram And check out her website. That's where you can find everything about her. But this episode is so good and I'll just get right into it. It's incredible. Sarah, I am so excited to have this conversation with you today. Welcome to the Employee to Boss show. I'm happy to be here and I'm feeling extra boss-like in my glasses today. Podcast listeners can't see, but I've got my like lovely librarian looks. (laughs) I love them. I love them. Sometimes that's just how it is, right? We have these boss days and then sometimes we have those days where we pretend like we're a boss, but we're not super feeling it. That was yesterday when my eye was swollen and I was like, it was like water dripping down my face. And I did have to clear my day yesterday, which is incredibly frustrating. Mm -hmm. As you know, you have entrepreneurs on here and there's something called a upper limit problem. So when you're kind of bumping into your next level of genius, mm. sometimes your body or life can do some really crazy self-sabotage things like, yeah. no, don't put your second book out. Let's just have a swollen eye. And then this morning I woke up with like the, my, like I slept wrong and I can not barely move my neck. And I am not someone who suffers from health problems. Like it's just been crazy you know, trying to reach my own next level of business and my own next level of work, these crazy ways that we can like get trapped in our own fear. So if anyone else is experiencing that, you are not alone, push through, we shall overcome. It'll be good. Mm, Totally. Every time I've invested in anything in my business, like over a thousand dollars, I have gotten Mm -hmm. sick just the next day I'm like ill. And I don't know. I think it's just Mm -hmm. like my body being like, this is a good change, but Mm -hmm. 
take a minute, <laughs> just take a minute and well, reflect. Exactly. It's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's been crazy. Like every time it's like, I need to do my audio book or I need to book edit or something. It's like one time I fell down the stairs. This is the mm. second time I've had to wear glasses in 2022. I have not worn glasses. I didn't even own glasses like 2000. 10 through 2022 like yeah. never ever and then it's like twice this year and that's exactly what it is it's like yeah. you know you're getting into your next level of genius and your body's like what this comfort yeah. zone thing let's just hang out there right no oh my gosh well I'm excited to get into your background how you became the toxic people proof brand and just all about your journey from employee to boss yeah. So I was a teacher in my uh, 20s. And then I got my master's in library science, which is my lovely, you know, my lovely librarian look. The really crazy thing about library science is it's actually a degree in like research. And librarians can pull information off the shelf, right? So if, if I was behind a library desk, and you started talking to me about a book, and I said, oh yeah, and that author also wrote this and this and this, or yeah, that person on this TV show said this and this, you would be like, that's what a librarian's supposed to do, okay? But when I take that version of myself onto a podcast, people think I'm a genius, mm -hmm. right? It's, I'm doing the exact same thing I always did, but people are like, oh yeah, in this book, I was like, yeah, and he also said this. And, I, and people are like, whoa, you're so smart. And I mean, librarians are very smart. I'm definitely not insulting the profession. Like mm -hmm. librarians are smart, but it's really interesting how we can pull those strengths from those other areas of our life into entrepreneurship. And so when I'm on a podcast, 80 to 90% of the time, they mention a book, they mention an author, they mention a podcast, they mention something, and I'm able to like either quote it or quote something from there, which every librarian I know can do that. Mm. But it's really impressive. Yeah. On a podcast, right? Sure. Like, oh, you read everything. How have you, how do you know everything, you know? And it's also really useful as a coach because then I'm not just speaking from my own opinions about things, you know, mm -hmm. I can, I can pull in other research. So, so that was it. And, um, there was actually a teenage girl who was killed by her toxic boyfriend. Her name is Emma Walker. It was on like Dateline and it was mm -hmm. just a huge national situation. And I started a mental health campaign for teens, uh, teaching them about healthy relationships and, as much as everybody says, oh, we need to like help teenagers, we do, but like trying to get someone to listen at 16, 17, and 18 is like not the time that people have ears willing to hear, right? So as adults, we're like, oh yeah, those teenagers, we need to like tell them that. And I was like, what these teenagers need is parents modeling good behavior. What these teenagers need is their parents being able to like transform and give them this information throughout for the next 10 years, not you know, during their high school days. So I uh, moved into life coaching and, and that piece. And that's the toxic person proof wasn't branded as such there, but that's kind of where the, the beginning started going. Yeah. Okay. So you were a teacher and then transitioned into more of like a mental health and then it transitioned into coaching. And now what you do still coaching, but you have a podcast, you're a writer, mm -hmm your published writer. And so like, what did the transition look like from being a teacher to being your own boss? I mean, being a teacher, you have to manage students almost, right? And so you mm -hmm. had that, but managing yourself is always a little bit different. It was, I actually had a former student reach out to me today and she said, it probably looks like you're doing something so different, but from having you as a teacher, you're not. I remember you teaching me how to use my voice. Mm, oh, that's I, got, I got that message today, like her name. Yeah, it was Corey. Oh I got that message today, I you know, and um, I think that made things easier. I, I mentioned before, like, okay, I was doing it in this avenue and now I'm doing the same thing in this avenue. It looks like a, it's a different income level. It's a different responsibility level, but I don't feel like a different person. Mm. And that I feel I was working within my skill set here. Then I was working within my skill set here. Then I was working within my skill set here. And so just really connecting with your strengths. Um, I was on a TV show this couple months ago and I had to say steroid and opioid free okay which is 
quite the tongue twister, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to be reading from a teleprompter and I was like, okay, what skills do I have to make this like successful? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that girl, I was a choir teacher, right? In my early Mm twenties before kids. And so I would do these vocal exercises and warm ups and that kind of thing. And I was like, okay, steroid and opioid free, steroid and opioid free, steroid and opioid free. And my mouth got used to saying it. So that way, when I was in front of cameras, it was very smooth. And it was like, yes, and they're steroid and opioid free. And it was very, I didn't stumble Mm. upon those words, right? And it was literally just like, okay, what skills do I have to make this successful? Yeah. Right. Not, not, not what do people say I should be doing? Not does, not what this person thinks, not this, not that, but just really that looking within. Um, And when I did that mental health campaign, I had been researching toxic relationships from some personal things in my life. And I was like, oh, I have all the skill sets needed to present this and and to help these kids and to help the situation. It was totally not my job description, right? It would have been very easy for me to say, well, that's not my job. That's not this. Uh, But I had the skills and I knew I could make a difference. And so that's what it looked like in a teaching setting. Then it looks like this in coaching. It looks like this when I'm on TV. It's just the same thing over and over. What do I have to bring to the table? How can I make it successful? Mm, That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And especially when we're starting our businesses, we really do have to look within and be like, okay, what can I actually do? I mean, for me, I'm a podcast producer and I never thought I'd use these skills that I I had a podcast back in college and I didn't think it was going to go anywhere but what I learned from having my own podcast the editing marketing strategy outreach using my voice all those things that I thought I was just doing for fun is now my full-time job and so we really do have to look within and figure out what is it that I can make money from and what is it that I can actually enjoy doing for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, there's only one of each of us, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, do, what do I bring to the world? What do you bring to the world? What does, you know, each person bring to the world and really thinking about it from that perspective rather than, um, you know, what's everybody else doing, uh, which, which does go to the toxic person proof thing. So, I was in a sales training with a guy named Eli Wild, who was like on stage with Tony Robbins in Tony Robbins virtual event, um, when COVID happened, Eli, he brings in Eli to like be his closer for his Tony Robbins virtual event. So that's Mm kind of level this guy is on as far as like sales genius. I'm just, he's also a little like sporadic. Um, he's probably watching this. Hi, Eli. Um, he's a little sporadic, you know, but he, (laughs) great. He's a genius. He's just a genius. And he talked about P90X. Okay. And so within P90X, he was friends with Tony Horton back when he was in LA. And uh, do you know what P90X is? I don't. I was going to say for me and everyone who's not sure, what is P90X? Okay. So P90X is this huge, like beach body. If you've heard of Insanity. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was like the first beach body video that like went berserko. I mean, sold yeah I don't have a quote-unquote beach body so that's probably why I was like what is that (laughs) (laughs) yeah well it uh I mean he just made bukus of money and Eli was friends with him before he'd made bukus of money Mm. and he was like oh I've got this great program I can't sell it and apparently it switched over when he started selling muscle confusion okay so muscle confusion was like, you know, you can't keep doing the same bicep curls because your muscles will just get used to it. So you need to have muscle confusion and confuse your muscles to build muscles. And it was actually apparently not true at all, right? <laughs> apparently that's not a thing, but just like you're nodding your head, we were all nodding our heads going like, I was like, like yeah, I guess, I guess, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I get it, right? And, you know, that's really when I started uh, twisting the language because there's so many people talking about narcissism so many people talking about toxic relationships it's like and I didn't want to teach people about narcissism I, I it's oh I, I was tired of it I was done with it but I wanted to help people after toxic relationships mm-hmm. so I was like yeah what language is missing from this conversation or what language you know what's my unique selling proposition and I started asking people what their healing strategy was mm. 
and they would have no idea. Or they would say, I'm watching YouTube videos. Okay, so YouTube is your guru. You're trusting your life to YouTube. How's it going for you? Is it working? Oh, it's not working. Shocker. Okay, moving on. I mean, you know, and just things like that, that I started, no, I wasn't really that blunt about it, but kind of I was. I mean, <laughs> kind Some of I need was. That. Some people need that. Yes, and when I started asking, you know, what's your healing strategy? People would be like, oh, yeah. I do need a healing strategy. And I was like, yeah, you need to become toxic person proof, right? Which was language in my original program years and years ago, but it was not language I highlighted, mm. right? So it wasn't a new idea at all. It was my original, what I had done. There's a whole thing on being toxic person proof, but it wasn't what I led with right? It wasn't my, my, my first thing, like muscle confusion. And it's like, well, you need to confuse your muscles. And I was the people like, yeah. And it's like, well, you know, there's bulletproof, right? Well, are you toxic person proof? And they're like, oh, I'm not toxic person proof. Right. And I think it's more honest than the muscle confusion because I do think we should, you know, yeah, be toxic person proof. Um, but it really led, you know, that piece that you're familiar with, Haley, that, that you've that you've seen and that there's so much information on. And it's also leading into my next book and my next leg of my business, which is called Problem Solved, Simple Habits for Complex Decisions. Mm. And through that language of unique selling proposition, right, I started to realize, oh, they need someone to connect the dots for them. They need like a reverse engineering in that healing strategy or life strategy or problem solving strategy or decision making strategy, right? And so it's, I call it going from spaghetti to waffles. Like when your brain is all confused, you're like, oh, should I do this? Or should I, should I have this niche? Should I have this business? Should I hire this person? Should I do a podcast? Should I do TikTok? What, you know, spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti to what I call brain boundaries, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, okay, take each thought, tiny thought and put it in its own waffle square. I like that. Right? Yeah. So you've got these little brain boundaries. And that's really where my clients started like booming. And you know, people probably assume with the toxic person proof that I teach self-worth, confidence, boundaries, people pleasing. And I, I mean, I have videos on that that they watch, but it is so little of my conversation within my work because it's all about these problem solving strategies and decision making strategies and how to unravel your thinking because when you have little brain boundaries you trust yourself right okay tiktok great on it go right and, and then you can start to take action um but it was really it all started with that like what's your unique selling proposition it was like okay what's your healing strategy my healing strategy is to become toxic person proof and then it was like okay what's your life strategy what's your decision making strategy What's your career strategy? What's this? And it, it evolved into, you know, what, what what's coming next out of the Sarah K. Ramsey chain. Um, and, and that process uh, that people just exactly like what you said, it's just, oh, yeah, that makes sense, right? It just makes sense. And when something can just make sense to, in the selling process, right? In the coaching process, right? In whatever it is, if you can come up with language when I say, okay, toxic person proof, you have a general idea of what that means mm -hmm. without me having to explain it. Exactly. That's right? so important. It, it's everything. When yeah. I say, what's your healing strategy? You already know you're in trouble. I didn't have to point out that what you're doing isn't working, yeah. right? Just the, the, you know, what is your healing strategy? Five words. <laughs> You know, I can ask you a five word question. It cuts straight to the chase and you go, I don't have one. Okay. How's that working for you? It's, it, it's very simple. It's, it's, it's really the muscle confusion thing, you know, yeah. it, it's more honest or, you know, do you, how do you make a decision? Well, I don't know. How's it working for you? You don't have a strategy for making a decision? No. Okay. Well, you think life would improve if you did have a strategy for making a decision? It's so common sense and it's easy for people. It's a language, right? I mean, as a marketer, like this is language, mm -hmm. language, right? Do you, you know, have you ever had a class, Haley, on making decisions? Never. No. Right. Do you know you make 35,000 decisions a day? I have heard that statistic. And as someone who hates making decisions, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's so many. 
<laughs> right? And, and then I say, okay, so, you know, I know a lot of people are in burnout. A lot of people are confused and they're, you know, decision-making fatigue. But to me, I just look at that. And I think we're making 35,000 decisions a day and no one's had a class on making decisions. Mm. Maybe if people had a framework for making decisions, we wouldn't have so much stress and burnout. Yeah. Everybody believes what I'm saying because it's what it's true. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's very, but it's also so logical that people go, oh yeah. It's like, what's your healing strategy? It's the same thing. It's just so dang logical that it's like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? Right. And so if you think about marketing as being like a hundred yard, you know, like a football field, like a hundred, a hundred yards. If you can craft your language in a way that is logical, honest, and just makes sense, right? You're, you're already at like at least the 75 yard line and like five words. That's okay, a so really make, good way to think of it. Right? You make 35,000 decisions a day and you never had a class on making decisions. You know, I'm, I'm putting out a book in September about making decisions. Would you be interested in that? People are like, hell yeah, where oh, did I get it? <laughs> Well, I think a big part is, and you talk about this a lot on social media, is clarity. Like people want clarity. I think that's what we're all searching for in life. Like clarity in what's next, clarity in life, clarity in business. Like literally all of us just want exactly that, clarity. And so really that's, that's a big part of what you help people with. Like, even if, if decision-making clarity, you know, getting rid of those toxic relationships, some people never think that they can be toxic person proof, but they want clarity on how to. And so you're really giving them that through your coaching and your programs, which I just think is awesome. Do you want to start growing your business rapidly in a really fun way? Do you want to increase your visibility and profits? I have just the thing for you. My course, Great Guesting, How to Grow Your Business Through Being a Podcast Guest is now available and it's guaranteed to get you on podcasts. Do you want to connect with more clients, share your story, make stronger connections, and grow your audience? But do you find that you're second guessing yourself, are indecisive on a topic because you're into so many things? and thinking, is this even possible? You'll love this step-by-step guide on how to be a podcast guest. We go over six lessons that are knowing your story, narrowing down the topic, finding podcasts to be on, setting up your audio, preparing to record, and of course, marketing, because that's what I'm all about. Being a guest can be fun, but if you don't have a plan to go with it, you're really just spending the hour talking. You're not moving your business forward. And that's exactly what this course is designed to teach you. You can find this course on my website at Espresso Podcast Production. And I guarantee you that you will be a guest on podcasts in no time. My subtitle of my first book, Becoming a Toxic Person Proof, is called Clear the Confusion and Learn to Trust Yourself. Mm. So it's really interesting from a PR perspective. People, she's like, are you like switching topics? I, I thought you were like this toxic person proof girl. I was like, yeah, notice my subtitle, Clear the Confusion and Learn to Trust Yourself. Then the next book subtitle is Simple Habits for Complex Decisions. Do we see the alignment here? You know, for sure. and, <laughs> you know and it really is just that clarity, really learning to unravel your head, you know, and establish those brain boundaries. So it's not just spaghetti, 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 but yeah. like, okay, I, with an entrepreneur, okay, I need a budget. Okay. I need income. Okay. What am I going to hire out? What am I going to do? Okay. Right. These are like very simple brain boundaries that we all have to think about. And if it's all raveled up in your head, <gasps> I don't know. Should I do this? Should I do this? And I mean, I think 70% of uh, people in the C-suite are thinking about leaving their job for burnout. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not figured out time is the great equalizer. I have not figured out how to create more time, but if you're making 35,000 decisions a day and you make those with more confidence and easier, you can create more time. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cause I'm just thinking of like the small questions that I get hung up on or the small decisions. I'm like, why does it take me an hour to decide what to have for lunch? And then for big decisions, like spending money on my business or hiring or finding podcast guests, I'm like, yeah, this is easy. Why are the tiny questions so hard sometimes? <laughs> like that confuses me. Minor league decisions, mm, right? Yeah. So minor league, major league, you know, minor league and major league decisions. So you just want to yeah. make sure. And those are really like what to have for lunch is like a little league decision. Like it's not even a minor <laughs> league. I'm know? like, I'll forget about league. what I had for lunch in a day. <laughs> like, but yeah. moment, I'm like, what is going on? But I love this concept of the spaghetti versus waffle brain. And I think one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about is, you know, you talk about toxic relationships, but relationships can be romantic, business, friendships, mm-hmm. like all of those things. And in entrepreneurship, when people are starting their business and they're client facing, like they're working with clients, sometimes we can get those clients that are just not it for us. They're just not the right person for us. I've had a few. Luckily, I have no shame in you know, being like, oh, this isn't working out. Sorry. Like, here's a list of other people that maybe you could contact. But for some people, especially when you're starting, you might relate your self-worth to your client's success. And like I'm saying, like we sometimes have those clients that are just difficult and you're not sure why it's not working. Sometimes it's you, sometimes it's not, sometimes they're just toxic. So Mm -hmm. could you talk about that a little bit? Like, becoming toxic client proof or like healing sure. from a toxic client I don't know like those are two well, big things I, I talk in my book I call it a toxic person encounter mm. I specifically did not use the term toxic relationships because people assume I'm only talking about dating yeah or like romance or whatever but toxic person encounter that's you know broader and and better right um so Within a toxic person encounter, um, I want you to think about how old you were when you started to learn how to take turns. Okay, probably like two or three. Yeah, probably like two, yeah. Okay, so a toxic person thinks it's always their turn. Mm. Now they may be the victim or they may be bossy or they may be aggressive or they may be controlling or they may be trying to hide things or they may be trying to steal money, but like, If you think about it being an energy exchange, all the energy is shifted to them, Mm -hmm. okay? So they believe that it's their turn all the time. Mm. They are the most important person in the situation at all times. And so when I think about really accepting that someone's not gonna change, I love to talk about it in terms of taking turns because I think, okay, so you heard, they heard this when they were two. This is a very universal thing we've all been taught. So at 22, 32, 42, 52, they haven't figured out how to take turns. Do you really think it's your coaching? Right? Right? Or it can't be my fault, right? Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of statistics that show um, that kindergarten teachers can predict personalities like for years later. There's, it's so interesting. That's cool. It's, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Like the way people yeah. act, sometimes they never grow out of it. I'm just thinking yeah. of like, I work with a lot of clients at a time. I don't do group coaching, but I work with, you know, at any given time, I could have eight to 15 clients. And that's a good point of sometimes they are like, I need this. I need this. I need this. This is an emergency. And I'm like, I have eight other people to take care of. Like, I care about you all equally. <laughs> Why? But it's, it's that taking turns. They do not know how to take turns. And, you know, you can set boundaries, but I will, I will share you guys my, my thoughts on boundaries. So we all need boundaries. Okay. But I think sometimes we get boundaries wrong and Haley, I'm sure you've heard the story of the three little pigs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one little pig had straw boundaries. One little pig had stick boundaries, right? House out of straw, house out of sticks. And then one little pig had brick boundaries. He built a brick house, okay? Which one of the pigs turned the big bad wolf into a sweet little lap dog? The brick house, right? The brick boundaries. (laughs) Well, it, it, it protected the pig, 
but did it change the wolf's personality or was the wolf still trying to, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff mm-hmm. and I'm going to, you know, or didn't the pit, didn't the big battle, I think he climbed through the chimney and into the like pot of the boiling water. Or oh, something. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've read the three little pigs, but, but the point being is I think a lot of people think I'm going to have boundaries and then it's going to change their personality. Right. And it's like, boundaries are to protect pigs not to transform wolves Mm, I like that and I I wish I wish I had I've talked to every expert in the world on this I wish I had a strategy that said hey if you do this you can change someone's personality it doesn't matter if it hadn't changed since they were two you just say these three magic words and do this prayer over them or this Indian chant or whatever. I mean, whatever it is. I mean, never, 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 never. And I have talked to everyone on this subject. You can check out my podcast, Toxic Person Proof. Every expert, every author, you know, they're all on there. And it's like, man. But within my next book, it talks about problem solved, simple habits for complex decisions. And the way it relates to toxic people is I see a lot of people okay, I couldn't change the big bad wolf. So I'm going to build another story on my brick house. Okay. I couldn't change the big bad wolf. So I'm going to paint the house a different color. Okay. I couldn't change the big bad wolf. So I'm going to, you know, study wolves for the next 10 years. Oh, I couldn't change the big bad wolf. It's like, man, just find a better problem to solve. (laughs) All that energy you're spending, hoping someone at 32 understands how to finally take turns when they have been told by every single person in their life for the last 30 years to take turns, right? And I think when we start to see it in that context, there's some, there's definitely some disappointment to it and there's some freedom to it. And that's what I want to free up people's energy and space to find problems that actually have solutions, not beating themselves up with the same poor problem. Right. Just over and over and over. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I love that. I love that a lot. To talk about your podcast a little bit, you're on episode like 314, was it? I I just looked before this and I was like, wow, like that's incredible. When did you start your podcast? During the pandemic. How have you gotten 300 episodes so far? I'm obsessed with it. It's my favorite thing. So um, I... I'm not sure if you've picked up on the fact that I'm an extrovert, Um, but, you know, during the pandemic, um, I really had social anxiety in the opposite way. You know, I have some introverted friends who will talk about going to a party and having social anxiety, and I truly had social anxiety from not having connections like you and I are having right now, Haley. It's like, you're this new person, you're interesting, you have big ideas, like you do things, you think things, like we can talk about it. Like I had no idea what a coping strategy that was for me. Um, so I used to do five a week. Wow. I used to put out five podcasts a week. I'm back down to three a week. Um, but my whole goal was to be the most connected person in this space. I'm doing pretty good. And yeah, you know, you people, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Her podcast. Yeah, I know her. I know her. And it's awesome when it's things like a book launch. And I'm like, hey, would you, you know, help promote my book? And they're like, yeah, we loved you. I loved of you course. on that podcast. <laughs> and it becomes this lovely mutual exchange of like taking turns, right? And it's like, yeah. hey, you know, my podcast and I got to broadcast your work to the world. You know, do you think you could help broadcast my work to the world? And people are like, yeah, I can do that. That's awesome, right? And it's just this lovely exchange of energy and, and taking turns. Um, so it does not feel like work. I absolutely love it. I, I don't do any of the editing or any of the, you know, I have an assistant who takes yeah. care of all that. So I only get to do the fun part. Um, I don't have any <laughs> questions. I don't have any forms. I don't have anything. Like, I'm just like, so what's your favorite it's thing? It's all the vibes. About? Yeah, all I love that. Things. Um. Also, have you heard of Haley of the 10,000 hours thing like um Malcolm here I am quoting the librarian thing so you think I'm smart um Malcolm Gladwell in his book Blink he talked about 10,000 hour concept or outliers outliers it was and he talked about the 10,000 hour concept and it's actually how Bill Gates became Bill Gates Mm. because Bill Gates had access to a computer his dad worked somewhere that he had access to a computer literally before anyone else did So he had all this practice in understanding computers before it was like mainstream knowledge to the world. And he had like, it's 
the idea that you have to have 10,000 hours in something to become an expert, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, Bill Gates had 10,000 hours of computers before anybody else knew what a computer was, you know, it went well for him. Um, and so <laughs> as a kid, I was a pastor's kid. Mm -hmm. And so when other parents were teaching their children not to talk to strangers, my mother was teaching me to talk to strangers, right? Like that I was supposed to be pleasant and nice and friendly. And, and it, it was a natural bent for my personality anyway. It wasn't like traumatic. I was yeah. a shy kid. It wasn't like that. Um, so it, it was weird to have these 10,000 hours of practice before I started my podcast. And it's like, mm -hmm. you mean you just like talk to people about interesting things? Okay, cool. And then I had all this feedback and I, I'll tell you a secret. I feel, I feel bad. I'm going to say this on air, but I had four people who were interviewed by Oprah and they were all like, you were like just as good as her, if not better. Like, you were amazing. And I was like, what ah. an amazing compliment. Four, four different people. Yeah. And oh. I didn't, it's just a survey at the end. I'm like, do you think I'm better than Oprah? Yes or no? I mean, it was like, <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> right. Yeah, it'd be so weird. Uh, they kind of like said it on their own. I had a girl today. She's like, wow, you're just a really good interviewer. And I was like, yeah, you just listen to people and say interesting things back. This seems, this seems not hard, um, but it's just within my skill set. And it goes back to what we we're talking about at the beginning. Like what is in your skill set? How do you bring it to the table as much as possible in your business? Mm -hmm. What is not in your skill set? Hire it out hire it out. I cannot do a spreadsheet to save my life. I just want to cry. Every time I look at them, people are like, how much money did you make this month? I have no idea. Sorry. I need someone else to keep up with that. I mean, I am not a numbers person. I'm a people's person. I'm a people's person, people person. Um, and, you know, I'm at a place that I can hire out some of that stuff because right. it is responsible to know how much money you're making and, you know, how many clients you have and that kind of thing. So yeah. um, uh, it's not, it's not my purpose. It's not my passion. You know, it's something you have to have because you have a business, but, you know, lean into those strengths and then hire out as soon as possible what isn't in your skill set, because the more you can do the things you're actually really good at, the faster you're going to grow. I love that. That's great advice. And like I was telling you before we started this interview, you caught my eye on Facebook and Instagram because I kept seeing you. I was like, oh, Sarah, Sarah, here she is. Like, with the same branding, like I notice you every time you post and, you know, like you said, three episodes a week, five episodes a week, like people will notice you. Maybe they won't notice every single post, but that's great marketing. Like you have to show up everywhere multiple mm -hmm. times for people to actually recognize you. And I just think that you're doing an amazing job at it. And your podcast is helping you so much with that visibility and just the posts that you make and I mean with three episodes a week you could repurpose that into so many different pieces of content and so it's just like awesome what you're doing thank you and it, I love it it feels so fun you know and and don't forget the the connection and networking piece you know I mean I really do I I there's an authenticity in like loving the conversations and loving the people I meet and that cannot be replicated at, let me go to a networking event, you know, yeah. I mean, we're having this conversation. It's like, oh yeah, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. It's this energy and connection. You know, I can reach out to someone two years later. I'm like, Hey, I need a book review. Will you write this for me? And they're like happy to. And yeah. you know, it's this, this enhanced gift that keeps on giving, mm -hmm. you know, and so more of those things you can build into your business too, where it's, it's real marketing and, and, and real networking of cross promotion. And like, you know, I'd, I'd love to do that for you. It's, it's just a really nice place to be in. It took yeah. a lot of years. Yeah, <laughs> it takes time, but that's really what will help your business grow. And podcasting is just such an amazing way to do that. Well, I, love, I it. love this conversation. And the way that I start wrapping up every episode is with you, the guest, sharing three actionable steps that the audience can start with today to follow in your footsteps. Um, like I said, they're trying to get from employee to boss or they're in their first years of business. So what do you challenge them to do? So definitely one, think about that unique selling proposition, right? Like I'm the world's leading expert on becoming toxic person proof. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people who help with narcissistic relationship recovery or toxic people. You know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm in competition with every therapist because that's not really true, but you know, it, there, you have to do something to set apart your brand. Yeah. 
right? You know, and it's like, I'm the toxic person proof girl. I help people become toxic person proof. So figure out that unique selling proposition. Um, and two, this goes with my next book, Problem Solved, Simple Habits for Complex Decisions. If it's not working, stop doing it try something else, right? And it goes back to the several moments in this where it's just like, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense to just keep hoping someone will change after, you know, 30 years of not taking turns. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense to, you know, do the same thing over and over again, hoping to get different results, right? So within that process, I want, I'm passionate about people spending their time on problems that have solutions, mm. right? You better figure out what those are and you better do more and more of those in your business, um, or you're just going to be frustrated and burned out. Totally. Totally. So that's two. What would I, uh, in three, I always like to remind people to find relationships uh, where people take turns, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, whether it be business relationships, professional relationships, you know, I, I just like, it's just such a, this mutuality of like, I can help scratch your back. You can have scratch mine and this energy exchange. So if you're in a relationship where it's always the other person's turn, that relationship's toxic. Good to know. Good to remember. Well, thank you so much for everything you shared today. Sarah, where can people connect with you? They can check out my website, sarahkramsey.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at, uh, at Toxic Person Proof and Facebook under Sarah K. Ramsey, R-A-M-S-E-Y. Oh, and my Toxic Person Proof podcast. How did I know? Of course, of (laughs) course. My Toxic Person Proof podcast. And with the next book, there was a new podcast I'm I'm recording right now about problem solved, uh, decision made. And and just, it's going to be very um, useful for entrepreneurs, you know, and just that if we make 35,000 decisions a day, and we take a lot of time to make a decision and we wish we had more time. Let's just connect those dots, right? You know, how do we make more confident decisions without the wobble? Um, so we can have more time or we're doing things that either we love or that generate income. That's awesome. Well, I will link all of that down below in the show notes, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com.